Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 17 RC or release candidate has been out for a few days and there's even more new features to talk about since the iOS 17 RC is out. What's new video. We'll talk about that along with the overall experience. I've been using it full time on my 14 pro max and iPad pro, and many of you have been using it full time and have responded on the YouTube community poll where at the time of this video, there's over 40,000 votes and 359 comments. I've read all of the comments to see what the overall operating system is like if RC2 is ready as it's imminent as far as its release. Now first let's go over the iPhone 15 pre-order. Many people pre-ordered the new iPhone in titanium or the regular one and I was a bit surprised at the number one color people were choosing. I actually put a Twitter poll out there so let's take a look and at the time of filming this video 6,809 people have responded and 53% ordered the natural titanium color. I thought for sure most people would pick blue or black but it seems natural titanium is the big color this year. If you ordered one let me know in the comments below. Now pre-orders went live yesterday. There was a bit of an issue for a lot of people and they've also pushed them back a couple months at this point. It seems like October or November for some locations, if you're trying to get specific types of phones. So it seems like they sold quite a few of them, but they go for sale next Friday. So you may be able to get it then as well. We'll also have Apple watch series nine, Apple watch ultra two, lots of things releasing very rapidly here in the next week or so. Of course, we're also going to get iOS 17 and more, but we got an AirPods update first this past week that puts us on the current public version where we can actually use it with the new features in iOS 17. It seems like they push this out because well, it takes a while to update these for some people and we're finally updated. So I went over all the new features on this and there's some great ones here. So if we scroll down, you'll see here 6A301 is the latest on the AirPods Pro 2, 6A300 for most of them, unless you have an AirPods one. So most of them will be on 6A300 though. That's the latest version to get you ready for the first update. Now, as far as iOS 17 and the new features, these AirPods seem to work really well with them. However, they're not working as well with Mac OS Ventura, it seems. If we have Sonoma though, they jump right on and connect. So it seems to be an issue with the older ones. However, once we update that problem will go away. Now, many people were asking, will we have an RC two? Sometimes we have a release candidate too. If there's additional bugs, I'm thinking Apple's going to release a different build number on Monday when iOS 17 releases, but we don't really know for sure. So we'll have to wait and see what they do there. But as far as new features, let's jump in and talk about those. Now, the public version of iOS 17 with iOS 17 RC find my finally works with the Apple TV remote. So that's something once you update to TV OS 17, you'll have the option to actually locate the remote. If you've lost it, I know that's a big issue for my house sometimes, and it should be able to help you locate it. If you've lost it. Also the other Today I mentioned how there's a new feature in home where we have grid forecast. We can see our energy usage where it's clean and where it's not. And there's also a new widget to go along with that. That's been found. So we have a new widget that brings us right into that and shows us our grid forecast. If we want to see that there's also a larger version of this widget as well. One other thing I wanted to mention is the new haptic feedback that's on this update seems to be much stronger and actually sort of vibrates longer when a notification comes in. If I have my phone flipped down on the table, a notification comes in, it's very noticeable that it's actually vibrating. Of course you can adjust that with haptics and always play, but that's something that's newer that I talked about in the what's new video, but the vibration seems much stronger. Also with the default ringtones that have a new sound. One thing I didn't mention is if we go into the ringtones, the default reflection ringtone has been remastered. So it sounds similar, but it's not exactly the same. So if I play it here, it sounds very similar. Also, some people have said that their regular ringtones that they customized have gone away. Some people, however, are seeing those actually under their tones. So under text tone, you may see those but it seems like they've gone away. Other people are reporting that the volume on some of the text tone is kind of quiet. And I've noticed the same sort of thing. Also new portrait mode editing works on some iPhones. So if you take a portrait photo, so let me do that quickly. And I took a photo of an iPhone and as long as it says portrait on it, you can now edit it after you've taken the photo. It records depth information and we can now focus on the background. So if I want to focus on the monitor and the stand behind it, I can, I can adjust the blur after the fact focus back on the iPhone. This is great. This is something Apple announced for the iPhone 15 that they've brought along to previous models. It may not be available on every 
everything, but at least it's here for some. Also, if we go back into the camera app within the camera app in the upper right, I talked about how we have Heath max. If we press and hold on this, you'll see it expands now. So that's something I didn't show before we had the menu, but if you want raw max Heath max, whatever you'd like, it's just a different compression. So that's available now. Now, one other thing I wanted to mention has to do with the new cases that I showed in a different video, the fine woven cases. This is for the iPhone 15 pro, and I'm not a big fan of this texture after seeing it and using it for a day. I haven't handed it to a single person that's actually liked it. However, one big detail I missed in the video is there's an action button cover. So we have volume buttons here. We have an action button and it's covered up. The only one that's open is the camera area and then the bottom for the ports with the USB-C, the speaker and microphone. So it's actually covering that, which is really nice. We've got that additional cover for the action button. So that's actually a cutout on the non pro cases. Also, one other thing I forgot you may have seen on Twitter is this is the green case. It was actually buried in the packaging that this shipped with. So this actually is the green case. It's a really deep sort of forest green if you haven't seen it. So it looks pretty good, but I'm still not a big fan of that texture. Now iOS 17 releases this Monday. It releases alongside iPad OS 17 and watch OS 10, probably TV OS and HomePod OS 17 as well. However, that update is going to be followed by other updates. So we're going to have a ton of features. Of course, I'll have a full length video about it, but we'll have a ton of features. And then after that, maybe a few days later, possibly the following week. So after we have the release of iOS 17 on the 18th, then maybe later in the week, we'll have iOS 17.1 beta one, if not that week, the following week, but we can expect the new journal feature, possibly some additional feedbacks with tap back and more. And also we can expect this coming week, iOS 16.7, for older devices. So the devices that aren't able to install iOS 17 should see that as well. So we should get a ton of different updates. We'll have to wait another couple of weeks for Mac OS Sonoma though. Now, as far as camera improvements, I don't think there's any difference whatsoever with the RC and beta eight. So take a look at some of the photos here, see if you notice any difference, but I really don't think there's any difference. They did add those additional camera features, but I think in general, it's been pretty good. As far as connectivity, it's still the same modem build that we've had for a couple different betas, but I really have no issues. It seems to do a good job. I have good Wi-Fi. my connectivity to cellular. Of course, that's going to vary depending on your carrier, how close you are or far you are from a tower, but I have five G U C here. I've been pretty happy with it compared to what I had even a while ago with iOS 16 betas. So it seems to be much better that way. As far as bugs that have been fixed. Well, most things seem to be pretty solid. Most people are saying that it's bug free or very close to it. There's still that notification bug. So you'll see here, there's that notification bug, but other than that, generally using it is pretty good. There's still small things here and there that people have complained about. For the most part, it's great. There is one issue I'll mention in a moment, but I did want to mention that iPad bug that I've had as it seems to be app specific. And with the iPad keyboard bug, what I mean is when you're in an app, say you're using YouTube and you want to jump ahead a frame or so use the keyboard and the arrow keys, they just won't respond until you interact with the display. This seems to be app specific and maybe because Apple doesn't let them update the apps to iOS 17 compatibility until after it's released to the public. So we should see a ton of different app updates on Monday as well. Now iOS 17's release is imminent and we're still going to have a few bugs here and there. That's pretty typical with a major release. And then we'll get a follow up release that fixes more of them. And it takes a little time. Hopefully it's better than iOS 16. Some people say that it's ready. Some people say that it's not, and we'll read some of your comments about that a little bit later. But as far as overall performance, it seems to be pretty smooth for the majority of people, including older devices, iPhone 11, iPhone 10 R. Most people say it's very smooth, even on older devices. However, I have had occasional stutters and when I get those stutters, they seemingly go away quickly. Or if they don't go away, I had it fully freeze up a reboot fixes the problem and it goes away for quite some time. So I'm not sure if that's specific to me, but I have seen some other people say they see stutters, but the majority of people say they have no issues and it's super smooth. Some have actually said they fully reset their phone and started over and it fixed all of their issues. So there could be something to that. And we'll talk about maybe resetting all the settings, but without wiping the device a little bit later, maybe in a separate video, see if that helps and see if that's actually something that will fix that. Also, one other thing I wanted to mention is accessibility features may not be great for some people with it reading the screen. I've seen some complaints of that. 
Most regular features seem to be great, but accessibility, not so much. As far as the overall heat of the device, the only thing I've noticed that heats up the phone seems to be when you're using portrait mode or using the neural engine a lot to do sort of that portrait rendering and the depth effects and more. After I close that app and film this video a little bit more, it's stayed nice and cool. So let's take a look at the thermals. And at the hottest point of the phone, if we zoom in here a little bit, we're around 91 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's around the same thing as 33.8 degrees Celsius. Now that's not too bad considering what we had before was just a couple degrees cooler with beta eight, but I hadn't used that processing feature as it wasn't there for portraits. So using that, closing that while we're making the video, will heat the phone up a little more. That's pretty reasonable overall, but it feels nice and cool to the touch. As far as battery life, it still hasn't been great for me, but many people report it's pretty good. If we go down to battery, go to battery health and charging. I'm at 88%. This went down a percent this week with 301 cycles, as you can see here. So it's not great as far as that goes, but if we take a look at yesterday, I used a hundred percent of my battery and only had four hours and 28 minutes of screen active time, three hours and 24 minutes of screen idle time. It's pretty good, but not phenomenal at all. So it definitely could be better. Today I've got better usage at three hours and eight minutes of screen active time and only 50% of my battery. So it seems like it's slowly getting better, but it's just not great. And again, Abhishek sent in his battery life. This is on an 11 pro max with 95% battery health. He used about 50 to 60% battery and had three hours and 32 minutes of screen on time, one hour and 33 minutes of screen off time about six hours total. Again, not phenomenal, but it's okay. Hopefully it just gets better over the next few days or possibly we have an RC too. So if you're wondering if you should install iOS 17 RC, well, this should be the final version or very close to it. So I wouldn't hesitate. And if you're a beta tester or a developer and you're wondering how do I get to the public version? Well, if this is the same build number that we get on Monday with the public version, you're just already on it. Turn off your beta updates and you just already have it. And you've had it for about a week. If there's an RC two, you'll actually have an update but it will be public as well because there's no other RC unless there's major issues. So it seems like this is going to be the final version, but either way we could have an update on Monday that's available to everyone. As far as what you had to say in the comments, let's go ahead and take a look. Maxwell Upton 21 said, Hey Aaron, I finally updated to iOS 17 RC from iOS 16.6.1 and I'm having absolutely no issues, no bugs, no glitches, no problems at all. It is very smooth and battery life is actually noticeably better than iOS 16.6.1 in my opinion. Can't wait for the final release on Monday. And like I said, you probably already have the final release unless there's a different build number. The evil chocolate cookie said, no, it is most certainly is not ready because the screen reader is a total broken mess and they've been more concerned over the placement of the end call button than fixing these device stopping bugs. They are device stopping for anyone who can't see the screen to fix them when their screen reader just randomly stops talking. M1 Mac Gamer said, I'm using it on an iPhone SE3 and it is very good. In fact, it is better than iOS 16. The performance battery life is so much better. I was getting four hours and 30 minutes of screen time. Now I get five hours and 45 minutes of screen time on a single charge. The photo processing is way better and the annoying notification glitch was resolved for me. Oliver 44W said, hi Aaron, using iOS 17 RC on my 14 Pro Max. Absolutely no issues at all from what I can tell. No bugs, no glitches, very smooth and battery life as good as always for me. Ready for the public release, I feel. Cheers. J Martino 5920 said, RC is running great. Two full days of great battery life since updating on Tuesday afternoon, Wednesday and Thursday. Device stays cool most of the time. I'll be keeping my 14 Pro for another year, so I'm glad 17 is finally showing signs of stability and battery efficiency. I got nearly 8.5 hours of screen on time the last two days. Thanks for all the vid videos, Aaron. Thank you. Kitty Phobe Practicing 709 says, Hello, Aaron. I'm using iOS 17 RC on my 1.5 year old iPhone 13 Pro. Absolutely no issues at all, as far as I can tell. No bugs at all, except for notifications, and the battery life is better too. My phone has 84% battery life, and I still get six to seven hours of screen on time with heavy usage. Overall, I like it almost stable if they fix the notification issue. So that's everything with iOS 17 RC. Hopefully, we get one more update when it releases to the public, and everyone just has an update 
update that finally fixes that notification bug and maybe some additional bugs that some are having. Let me know your experience in the comments below. And if you ordered an iPhone 15, 15 plus 15 pro or 15 pro max, I'd love to hear from you as well. If you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, of course, I'll link it in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.